Welcome to the November 20th regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. For our new guests in attendance, please silence your cell phone and then everybody join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I think we're going to get good at that. Yeah. All right. John, you want to take a roll for us, please? Absolutely. Uh, President McFarland is still not here. Uh, <laughs> Vice President Rausch? Here. Uh, Secretary Hatfield is here. Treasurer Lauterbach is not here. Member Blazy? Here. Member Ringgold? Here. And Member Horowitz? Present. Do we have a quorum? We do. Perfect. All right, item number two is the consent agenda. 2.1 or approval of the minutes from the October 16th regular meeting um, and minutes from the October 23rd special meeting. 2.2, the below staff announced their resignation effective on the dates <coughs> listed in the agenda packet. 2.3 is approval of the payment of the school system's bills for the month of September 2023 is listed in the check registers prepared by Ms. Holderby in the amount of $9,012,189 is recommended. The distribution of obligations by fund is included in the documentation. And finally, 2.4 approval is requested to authorize legal payments to the below list for professional legal fees as listed in the agenda packet. a motion for approval of the consent agenda. I move approval of the consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.4. I'll second the motion. Motion by Hatfield, support by Horowitz. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, best part of the evening, Penny. Shining stars. We have two this evening. Hi, Hi. I'm so glad you're here. I saw her today at school and reminded her, and she said, I really don't like these things. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. We're gonna, we're gonna make it the best it can be. Joanne Coates is our first shining star. She joined the MPS team in 1991 as a paraprofessional at multiple buildings, including an office professional at Siebert, uh, which was your last position as a paraprofessional. And then in 2014, transitioned to the role of administrative assistant at Chestnut Hill, where she is still currently employed, knowing all the names of those little ones. Joanne was nominated for her Shining Star by MPS parents and colleagues, and among their comments were the following. Joanne is amazing. She keeps everything running so smooth at Chestnut Hill. She sends reminders to parents, is helpful, and is so quick at learning students' names. It's true, I saw it for myself. <laughs> Joanne is the absolute heart and soul of Chestnut Hill. She makes everyone feel important and valued every time she speaks knowledgeable and has expertise of the Chestnut Hill School and community which contributes to the success. Joanne goes above and beyond to support teachers, staff, and students. She works hard to hold students accountable while still supporting their needs. She works diligently with families to ensure they have necessary resources to be successful. Chestnut Hill is lucky to have Joanne.
about Mark Nappy, uh, our second shining star for the evening. Mark joined our MPS team in 1994 when he was hired to teach at Plymouth Elementary. He also taught at Cook and Parkdale. In 2018, he transitioned to teaching math at Jefferson, which is the current position he holds. He earned his Bachelor and Master of Arts from Saginaw Valley State University and a Master of Arts in Library Media from CMU. Mark was nominated uh, for his Shining Star by MPS students. These are always extra special ones, just like yours, students. Mr. Nappy goes out of his way to make math class fun. Mr. Nappy is amazing at making math exciting, fun. It's a great class. Math class was always my favorite because of Mr. Nappy's teaching. Another quote, Mr. Nappy made math class fun, there's a theme here, and interactive. He teaches in a very effective way. He has a fun personality and teaching style. Math was my least favorite subject at the beginning of the year, and it became my favorite because of Mr. Nappy, which says a lot. He is nice, but also strict and serious when needed so that students learn. Congratulations to Mark Nappy. Thank you, and congratulations to our recipients. Um, item number 3.2 for action, expulsion of student A, Mr. Jaster. Thank you, Mr. Rausch. Um, a board subcommittee met October 12th, 2023, regarding student A to consider expulsion for the remainder of the 23-24 school year. Student A was originally suspended for 10 days for physical assault of a staff member. It is the recommendation of the board subcommittee that student A be expelled for the remainder of the current school year. Uh, this action does require a roll call vote, and then the resolution is attached in your packet. Okay. All right, do you want to call for it? Yep, still need a motion for item 3.2. I move to approve item 3.2, expulsion of student A. I'll second the motion. Motion by Hatfield, support by Horowitz. Mr. Hatfield, will you take a roll call, please? Absolutely. Oh, sorry, any discussion? Any discussion? We do the roll call, please. Yep. Vice President Rausch? Yes. Secretary Hatfield? Yes. Member Blazy? Yes. Member Ringgold? Yes. Member Horowitz? Yes. All right. Unanimous. Item 3.3 .3 is operating the hold harmless millage information. Brian? Thank you, Phil. I appreciate it. Um, over the course of the past few budget presentations that I've given you, I've been hinting that this has been coming and pointing out a couple of certain specific slides and in discussing this with our superintendent, uh, interim superintendent Penny, uh, we felt that it would be applicable to give you a very brief presentation this evening that is informational only. We're not asking you to take action tonight. We're gonna to be asking you to take action in December. We'll have the official authorizing resolution, but to provide complete transparency and for you all to be able to pose any questions that you'd like to, to our admin and finance team, we wanted to bring you this information this evening just to give you a primer of what we are gonna be asking you to approve in December for a ballot proposal on the May 7th, 2024 election. What we are going to be asking you all for, hold on one second, let me get my clicker working here. All right, Dave, pass her down for me. Please, job, I know. <laughs> We can just go old school too and you guys can just click forward for me. I do have more than one slide, I promise. <laughs>
Perfect. Well done. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, we're back in business. So what we are going to be asking the voters for is to renew our current non-homestead and hold, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we're just working on making sure everybody can see a screen. Okay. All right. So we're still waiting. Okay, back to the beginning. <laughs> Hi all, I'm Brian. This was the second most exciting presentation of the evening, Behind the Shining Stars. Um, again, so what we're going to be asking our voters for um, is to renew our current operating millages, which are our non-homestead and our hold harmless millages for a period of 10 years. These have been in place since 1994, and for those of you that have taken your board training classes, know that there is something very important to us called Proposal A, which was passed in 1994. In its simplest form, what Proposal A said is that there will be a foundation allowance, or an amount per pupil, that is given to school districts. So you take whatever that foundation allowance is, the number of students that you have, and for our prediction purposes this year, we estimated that we were gonna have 7,411 students. You multiply that times what Midlands Foundation is, which is $9,730, and you come up with a little over $72 million. I have a nice little asterisk there because you all know we're about $103 million revenue operating budget, so there are other funds that come in, federal funds, categoricals, et cetera, et cetera. But in its most basic form, our primary source of funding is that foundation allowance. When Proposal A passed, it also said that school districts must seek approval to levy up to 18 mills on what are called non-homestead properties. Non-homestead properties are second homes, businesses, those type of things, and they must, by that local levy, contribute to the foundation allowance. And it's key to understand that the state does not and will not make up revenues that are not collected via that non-homestead assessment. So for our budget prediction purposes this year, again, we were predicting to bring in from the foundation a little over $72 million. With that non-homestead assessment of 18 mills, the state will provide a little bit under $53 million and our local revenue will bring in about $19.2 million. So that $19.2 million is subject to that 18 mil levy that we're talking about. And the breakdown you can see is the state providing about 73% of those dollars and the locals providing 27% of those dollars. Our operating millage, our non-homestead assessment, it's not a tax increase, it is not a new tax, it's also not a tax on primary residences, and it is absolutely essential for MPS to be able to provide the level of academic programming and the also co and extracurricular op opportunities that our stakeholders have come to expect. You all know through the many presentations that we've provided to you that our operating millage helps us to provide all kind of great things to our students, to our staff, and to our stakeholders. All of our elementary schools have the IBPYP program. We have the PASS program, the ELPS program, a wide variety of world languages. Our CIA committee got to see some of the unique things that we're doing in world language today. An expanding early middle college program, and as you pointed out, Member Ringgold, um, a very vast CTE program as well too. It also helps us with our clubs, our organizations, our large number of athletic teams, art and music programs, our robotics teams, supports all of those great things that um, we are able to provide to our students, staff, and stakeholders. Can we all see a screen still? Yes. You can, I can't. Okay. <laughs> That's all right, we're gonna adapt and overcome. I'm good at calling audibles, so that's not a problem. <laughs> okay, so we also do need to talk this evening about our Hold Harmless, which is a part of our operating village as well too. Schools, when Proposal A passed in 94, if you were funded above where that foundation was at the time, you were able to ask your local taxpayers to be able to assess additional mills to bring you up to a certain level. At that time in 1994, there was a magic formula, and that magic formula split out that the Midland Public Schools could collect about $415 above the foundation. At that time, the calculation was that that would take a levy of about 5.623 mills to be able to collect those $415. Over time, legislation changes, laws change, 
And where we are currently is that Midland Public Schools only can collect an additional $122 per student. And for those of you that um, understand school finance and taxes and the way that it works, our levy has historically been decreasing over time. At that time, we had around 10,000 students. We no longer do. We have a little over 7,400 students. And of course, property values have gone up. So if I have to collect less money from higher property values on fewer students, that rate of 5.5623 mills has been going down over time. At the most recent tax collection assessment board meeting, you all as a board authorized us at Midland Public to be able to set a hold harmless levy, levy of 0 0.4531 mills. And you can see that when you do the quick math on that, that's a revenue for the Midland Public Schools of around $900,000. And that goes up and down a little bit based on actual student count um, and estimates based on how things came in year over year. I shared this graph with you back in June. This shows the history of our hold harmless assessment. And you can see, based on the math that I explained a couple of slides back, that this has been historically decreasing because of all those reasons, increased property values, declines in enrollment, and legislative changes on how much that we can collect for the Midland Public Schools. The same type of slide we did before, the hold harmless, this is not a tax increase. This is also not a new tax. This has been in place since 1994, just as our operating millage has. It is a historically decreasing rate. I cannot promise and look you straight in the eyes and say that it will decrease every single year because it's a math formula, but historically over time you can see that it's gone from in the mid fives down to less than one mil, and we expect that to be there for quite some time. And also this $900,000 is essential for us to be able to provide all of those academic opportunities and co-curricular opportunities that you saw before. Just in context, when you add the two together, you're operating non-homestead 18 mills, and your hold harmless together, we're talking around $20.2 million in revenue. What does that mean to Midland Public Schools? That is salaries for approximately 280 teachers or 57% of our teaching staff. For all of our other Midland Public Schools employee groups, for context, the salaries equal about 13.6 million, and all of our building and department supply and contracted service budgets are around 12.3 million. So you could see 20.2 million is an extremely important source of revenue for the Midland Public Schools. And the Hold Harmless Millage, just like the other, allows us to be able to provide all kinds of innovative and essential programming for our students. So with that said, we will come back to you again in December. At December, we'll have a very fancy authorizing resolution that will have the official ballot language. We've been working with our council to be able to draft that language. We'll ask for your authorization to be able to place that on the May ballot. And once we get that authorization, then Sarah and I have a lot of work to do to notify clerks and all of those different type of things as well too. And again, we wanted to provide this opportunity so you had the information in advance. And in December, this didn't come as a surprise to you. Very happy to entertain any questions that you have. And if you have any questions in between the board meetings, we're here to get those answered for you as well, too. Any questions for? The, going back to the very beginning, the language for this particular ballot initiative in May 2024 will allow us to collect for the next 10 years? That's correct. Okay. We've done the same every 10 years okay. since 1994. So if you follow our track, 94, 04, 14, 24, that's the track run. So I know this is a tough opinion, but is this um, a viable formula going forward? Or, or do you think that there will be anything to uh, change it, modify it, overturn it since Proposal A? And obviously we have increasing property values decreasing number of students. Um, do you foresee them changing how this works? I often joke with Penny that my crystal ball is broken, Brad. Okay. Um, <laughs> and she, she's laughing as well, too. Um, I, I would be willing to place a hefty wager that Proposal A is going to be the model that we're going to see for some time. I have not seen or heard of any talk about that sort of a major change in the funding model. Um, hold harmless gets tweaked a little bit here and there. Um, you would be perhaps more likely to see changes with hold harmless 
than you would with the foundation allowance through proposal A. Penny, feel free to disagree with me on that again because my crystal ball sometimes has a bit of a fog on it, but I have not heard of any talk about that model changing. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> All right. Thank you for the inter introduction. Um, item 3.4 is a superintendent search process update. Um, so just read through the timeline that we set earlier tonight. In December, uh, HYA, our consulting firm, will conduct individual interviews with board members. January 10th and 11th, they will be in district to do um, focus groups and forums with our community and both internal to schools and external to schools. We'll have a survey open December 4th through the 20th. Um, we will have a special meeting on January 29th to present district leadership profile report. Um, February 20th at 6 p.m. will be a presentation of slate to the board and an interview workshop. Uh, February 26th and 28th at 5.30 p.m. We'll conduct first round interviews <clears throat> with the semifinalists. The week of March 11th will be the finalist day in the district. March 20th, we will conduct final round interviews and, and complete the selection at that time. I do note that we will also have a special meeting to finalize the um, job description on thank you Brad Tuesday December 5th At 7 o'clock that concludes item 3.4 at this time we move to item 4 which is request to address the board uh, first on my list is Renita Bonadies Good evening. I have submitted several FOIA requests over the past two years. There has been a consistent policy of responding with an estimate of fees, and one was actually done for no fee because it was very basic. Once I paid the 50% of the estimated fee, the FOIA request was fulfilled, and I would receive another FOIA fee itemization form with the actual fee to be paid based on the hours put into it. I submitted two FOIA requests on October 25th. One was for communications mentioning the special school board meeting on October 10th, and the other was for any documentation that contained archive.org or Wayback from August 1st through October 25th. Both of these were very specific and simple queries and requests. This time, instead of being given an estimate fee, I was given an actual fee. The hourly rates have gone up by more than 100% since 18 to 24 months ago when I had FOIA requests and others. The amount of the deposit requested also exceeded the 50%, which was allowable under FOIA. However, I only paid the actual 50% due. Once I received the PDFs by email for the FOIA request, I asked for a final form of the actual time spent on the FOIA fulfillment. I was told that the original was the actual fee and the balance was due. Basically, there was no need to account for the actual time spent searching and redacting the information I was given. So I am to believe that before the request was fulfilled, that the director of IT knew it would take two hours to do a search and produce a file and that the director of HR, the FOIA coordinator, knew it would take two hours to redact the documents, which had not yet been captured. Perhaps this board makes it a practice to take a quote and just pay it at the end of a project with no actual accounting of the job done. Furthermore, FOIA makes it clear that there is to be an actual accounting of the time spent fulfilling the request and that the redacting time is to be rounded down if it is any partial increment of 15 minutes. In this case, there were absolutely no redactions done on any of the documents I was given. The majority of these documents were simply form emails sent by a company to everyone on their email list. 
I also was given a 373-page document, which included a search for the word archive.org from the Journal of Applied Learning and Teaching. This document was labeled in my request as a PDF that said documents searched and redacted. Why would a public document be redacted? So I paid the $224.22 for this FOIA request, although I believe FOIA violations exist. But as previously mentioned during the special meeting, we can take you to court and we have plenty of legal coverage, but your insurance paid by our tax dollars gets used against us. We just want you to do things right. Thank you. Joe Bonnetti. Hello. Just a couple of odd things for this. Uh, based on the previous meeting for HYA, I'm curious why, you, and pushing this back a month, you are going to make a decision, approve, and announce a new superintendent in March of 2024. It was February. But you're not going to let them begin until July 1st, four months later. I don't know if they will be available or not, but would they be available? It would be nice if they could start earlier before the start of the school year and get on the ground and get rolling. I don't know why there's a four month gap between they have the job and they start. And secondly, I know you consider us gadflies here, but the New York Times, not a bastion of conservative opinion, last week published a significant article on COVID closures may be, quote, the most damaging disruption, unquote, to kids' education in U.S. history. So the next time you think about going remote, regardless of what the public health department says, you need to have the other consequences in scope because obviously they weren't the first time. Thank you. Bill Domino. Hey, Joe, we're going to look into that. I think that was, the dates were put in for a very specific reason. We're happy to answer that. I think it was to allow the superintendent, if he was in a different district, to go all the way through graduation and finish the year and then have a transition period, I believe. But we'll check it out. Well, good evening. Um, at last month's meeting, I mentioned uh, how across Michigan and across the states at school board meetings, concerned parents were reading verbatim from objectionable materials uh, that they found in school classrooms, et cetera. And I had encouraged the board to consider making a motion, and I will read it soon. Um, but I have not, to my knowledge, I guess you guys have not made such a motion, and I will read it now. I encourage you to do the following. Any book or material in Midland Public School libraries, classrooms, or available via digital means whose content may not be read aloud during the public comment period of any school board meeting shall be immediately removed and deemed inappropriate for the children under the care of Midland Public Schools. To be honest, I can't see how anybody could object to that because the, the corollary to that is you do support things that are objectionable, and I'm sure you don't do that. So I really would like that to be something that you really put at top of mind. And in light of uh, agenda item 5.2, which I just saw on the agenda, the Sex Education and Birth Control Advisory Board, I'm a little concerned because I'm not sure about the diversity of thought on that board. I see different roles, parents, this and that. But as we know, diversity of thought, is there a representation of Judeo-Christian traditional values? Is that proportional to those that think, think otherwise? I just ask you to, to please keep this in mind, that the appropriateness is really the biggest thing, and I hope that advisory board takes that to heart. Because, I mean, when you look at this sort of things, if you find something that shouldn't be there, please take it out, and that should be something I think you should have in hand as part of that advisory board's mission. Thank you. Thank you. 
That was everybody that had signed up on my list ahead of time. Is there any other members of the community that would like to address the board? Okay. Continue on then. Section five is curriculum instruction and assessment. 5.1 are the uh, CIA study minutes, study committee minutes from October 16th. CIA met on October 16th. Uh, mm -hmm. Members present were myself, Ann Horowitz, Jennifer Ringgold, Henny Miller Nelson, Jen Service, Melissa Toner, Brian Bruton, and Jeff Jaster. Our guests were Mary Chilton, Joy Yang Jo, uh, Jennifer Pedalty, and Tila Sherman. The location was Midland High School. We started at 2 o'clock. We went to an algebra seminar classroom visit. Tila Sherman and Je Jennifer Pedelty guided the committee on a classroom visit to the algebra seminar classes and provided an update about this academic intervention. We also had an update on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and Joy shared information about community engagement activities and collaboration with the Dow High Student Diversity Group. We also discuss continuity of learning. The plan remains unchanged, but must be reviewed and posted as a federal grant requirement. Data review. Mary Chilton presented spring 2023 student achievement and growth data. The committee discussed points of pride and, op <clears throat> excuse me, and opportunities for growth and improvement. We adjourned at 3.30. Thank you. And item 5.2 for information, the 23-24 Advisory Board on Instruction in Sex Education and Birth Control. Ms. Miller and Austin. Uh, good evening. Yes, we have for you uh, the list in your, in your uh, board agenda of the following community members uh, and students who have been appointed to the Advisory Board on Instruction in Sex Education and Birth Control for the current school year. Um, Jen Ringgold, uh, as uh, noted in our organizational meeting serves as the board liaison to this committee and Reverend Wally Mayton and Voloshini uh, Urugan who is our new curriculum specialist they serve as chairs I'll just offer to you that this committee um, is tasked uh, by port board policy 5420 um, the the committee itself is meant to establish our sex education program goals and objectives and they are to convene when it's time to review any of those curriculum materials. It's been some time since those have been reviewed, and actually we are beholden to the state of Michigan and the options they provide. We don't see any changes coming in the near future. They also are to review the biennial, biannual sex ed uh, report, which is really uh, from the health department, and we'll have that in the spring at a board meeting. That is specifically aligned to the goals of our program, which is to reduce teen pregnancy, reduce uh, sexually transmitted diseases, and ensure healthy young people uh, in our school communities. So yes, those are the board uh, members appointed, and they do reflect the requirements of our board policy. You'll see there are student and parent representatives. There are school staff members, as well as healthcare professionals. Thank you. And then number 5.3 for action textbook adoption. Yes, so that's me too. At the last meeting, I brought to you a book for the 28-day review period and for your information, and we're ready for your action this evening. Uh, we have for you the IB Business Management text, cleverly titled Business Management. Uh, the publisher is Oxford, which is a known publisher of our IB resources and text with the copyright of 2022. Thank you. Take a motion or entertain a motion for approval of 5.3. So moved. Support. Motion by Lauterbach, support by Hatfield. Any discussion? Nope. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Item six is finance facilities and operations, 6.1 FFO study committee minutes from November 6, 2023. Uh, okay, I'll be reading those. Uh, the committee met on November 6th of 2023. Members present were Brad Blazy, John Hatfield, and Scott McFarland, who was filling in for me because I was out of town, Penny Miller Nelson, and Brian Brutin. Uh, guests present were uh, John McGraw and Luan Wen. 
the first item was the East Lawn property, John McGraw and Luan Wen. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sorry if I'm not. From River Caddis provided an update to the committee on the uh, project scope. September financials were reviewed. <coughs> variances from year to year were discussed. Revenue variances were due to the timing of receipt of summer taxes. Bus purchase. Administration will propose ordering six buses. Funds have been allocated from the Series 3 bond proceeds. Welding classroom lockers and benches. The administration will recommend the purchase of lockers and benches for the welding classroom at Midland High should 61C funding be made available from the Midland ESA. Walk-in freezer. The administration will recommend the purchase and installation of a walk-in freezer to be installed at Midland High. Food service funds will be utilized if approved. Summer tax collection resolution. The board will be asked to approve an annual request to the City of Midland to collect half the school's tax levy during the summer, summer tax collection period. Salary formula modification. Feedback was sought on potential modifications to the salary formula in place for all affiliated bargaining units. And finally, facility study. Feedback was sought on potential content to be presented at the board workshop scheduled for December 18th. Our next meeting will be Monday, December 4th at 5 p.m. Right. Item 6.2 for action, bus purchase. Brian. Thank you. Uh, we have requested pricing. We provided within your packet a tabulation for the purchase of six new buses. This purchase includes 277 passenger buses that have child seats, 277 passenger buses that have under storage bins, and 277 passenger buses that have wheelchair lifts. We are recommending that we issue a purchase order to Midwest Transit of Eaton Rapids, Michigan for the amount of $890,028. And as mentioned in the FFO minutes, Series 3 bonds, bond funds have been set aside for this purchase. Thank you. Entertain a motion for item 6.2. So moved. Second. Motion by Lauterbach, support by Ringel. Any discussion? Well, we did go through the same normal purchasing channels as we have in the past. Yes, sir. And we have uh, quite an increase from what we did with our last set of buses, correct? Over the past five years, we've seen a 56% increase in buses. And the importance of ordering them now, just so everyone knows, is so that there's a chance we may receive them. Yes. Last year, we ordered in December. We received them in August. And of course, they have to go through inspection, so we weren't able to deploy. So we're trying a month earlier this time. Um, hopefully that we get them in July and we can put them into action. Um, this also will phase out our backups that are 65 passenger, um, allowing for higher capacity. So once we have this in, our backup fleet will then be of the same size. Um, so when we do have issues, which has happened this year a couple of times, we do have similar size buses. So we're looking forward to getting these in. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? All in favor of item 6.2, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Item 6.3 for action, walk-in freezer at Midland High. Brian. Thank you. Um, as Penny has pointed out to you in <coughs> communications, we've had a surge in usage of our food service program, which is absolutely wonderful. And because of that, analysis of equipment needs within the program has identified the need for an additional walk-in freezer at Midland High. We recommend issuing a purchase order for this freezer and its installation to Rolls Mechanical of Fenton, Michigan for a total price of $39,479. We do have food service funds set aside for this project if it does have your approval this evening. I move approval of item 6.3, purchase of a walk-in walk -in freezer. I support. Motion by Hatfield, support by Horowitz. Any discussion? Brian, can you share just roughly how much food service increase we've seen this year? Okay, Mr. Jaster, do you remember the exact percentage? I want to say it was 60, Penny, 60%. I feel that's fairly accurate. It's a lot. It's a lot. It, significant. Uh, I don't have that exact number at my head, Brad, but it's, it's significant. Greater than 50% increase. Yes, sir. That's a lot. Questions or comments? All in favor of item 6.3 say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Item 6.4 for action, 
summer tax collection resolution Friday. Yeah, thank you. Um, for clarity, this is not related to the presentation that I gave you. Um, this is an annual resolution that I seek um, to be able to deliver to the city of Midland on behalf of the board. As you all know, we do collect summer taxes in the city, not the other outlying townships, but within the city, we do. We have to give them um, notification that we'd like them to continue this practice that is due to them before the first of the year. So we are seeking your approval to notify the city of Midland that we wish to continue our practice of collecting summer taxes within the city and you have an applicable resolution in front of you for um, consideration this evening. Entertain a motion for item 6.4. I move the adoption of item 6.4. I'll support. Motion by Lauterbach, support by Hatfield. Any discussion? Does this need a roll call because it's no nope. yeah. okay. okay. When we do the official numbers, John, you're 100 percent correct. This okay. is this is just my ability to send a letter. Got so, it. yep. Thanks. All in favor of item 6.4, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Curious. Item 6.5 for action: welding classroom. Lockers and benches, Brian. Thank you. Um, an analysis of the equipment needs within our welding program identified the need to renovate our current lockers and benches that are used for equipment and personal item storage during class time. Administration, we recommend that if 61C funding is approved by the Midland ESA, a purchase order for this equipment be issued to Global Industrial of Buford, Georgia for a total price of $22,978.85. Funding if 61C funding is approved from the Midland ESA for welding classroom lockers. Support. Motion by Ringgold, support by Hatfield. Any further discussion? Welding students are really excited about this. <laughs> That's awesome. All, right. All in favor of item 6.5 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Item 6.6 .6 for action gifts totaling $43,323, Brian. Thank you. Because of the size of these gifts, they do require board action to be able to accept on behalf of the Midland Public Schools. Um, the first gift was from the Dow High Sports Boosters. That is for a new scoreboard table. That's for $24,573. From the Dow High Music Boosters Club, support of $11,000 for various needs within the band. And from Cheryl Potter and family, a gift of $7,750 for Midland High Athletics. We would appreciate your action this evening allowing us to accept these gifts. Move that we accept uh, item, approve item 6.6, .6, gifts totaling $43,323. Support. Motion by Hatfield, support by Waterbot. <laughs> Any discussion? Thank you. Great big thanks. All in favor of accepting the gifts in item 6.6, .6, say aye. 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 Any opposed? 6.7 for information gives totaling $34,324.35, Brian. Thank you. This is for information only. We would like to express our gratitude for 46 gifts, as you pointed out, totaling just over $34,000. They support a wide range of items and activities ranging from chemistry equipment, athletic items, robotics, and support for Kindness Week. Per tradition, all donors will be recognized in our meeting broadcast credits and also through board correspondence. We remain appreciative for our very generous community. And those four and a half pages total $77,647 in total gifts. That's the last one. Thanks, Brian. You're off the hot seat. <laughs> All right. Section 7 is Human Resources. 7.1 are Human Resources Study Committee Minutes from October 20th, 2023, which I'll read. Um, members present were myself, John Hatfield, Jennifer Ringgold, 
Penny Miller Nelson, Brian Bertin, Jeff Jaster, and Karen Justin. Uh, we covered hi hiring updates. Karen Justin provided the committee with an update on <clears throat> the status of current job postings for both certified and non-certified staff. Item two, recruitment plans. Results from the recent MPS job fair were shared. There was additional discussion around upcoming plans for recruiting. Item number three, contract status updates. Jeff Jaster shared highlights from the recent re renegotiations of the Midland Federation of Paraprofessional Contract, effective July 1st, 2023 through June 30th of 25. Item number four, it's the Midland City Education Association letter of agreement update. Brian shared the status of the recent LOA discussions with the MCEA. Item number five were legal and legislative update. Jeff Jaster shared a summary of PA 147 that changes the timeline for retirees to be able to return to work in public education. And then finally, item number six was salary study. MPS contracted with Ramberg, Stover, and Associates for the purpose of completing a salary study for both administrative assistant and manager employee groups. The reviews will be completed in early 2024. Item 7.2 uh, for information below staff members have announced their retirement. Effective on this date, Jeff. Yeah, thank you. Um, Ms. Jennifer Doran. One of our social work coordinators, uh, acronym uh, SSSs, uh, who worked primarily at Central Park in Chestnut Hill, will be um, retiring effective December 31st this year. You want to take yep, 7 I'll just continue. Yep. Thank you. 7.3, board and staff extend their deepest sympathy to the following families. First, the family of Ellen Smith. Uh, she passed away October 9th, 2023. Ellen was a substitute teacher for the district from 1970 through her retirement in 1995. Uh, many long-term sub-positions during that, that tenure period, including positions at Cook, Woodcrest, and Chippewasee Elementary. Also, the family of Herb Skog, Herbert Skog, passed away October 18th. Herbert was employed with MPS as a PE teacher, swimming coach at Woodcrest Elementary, Central Intermediate, Midland High School, and Dow High. He also transitioned to administrative roles. He was the coordinator of physical education, health, and athletics. He also became principal at several of our elementary buildings, Siebert, Adams, and Plymouth. And then he returned uh, to the administration building as director of school administration, <coughs> excuse me, until he retired uh, in that position in 1994 with 38 years of service. After retirement, Herbert uh, served two terms on the MPS Board of Education. Uh, next, the family of Diane Paulson. Uh, Diane passed away October 22nd, 2023. Diane was employed with MPS as a paraprofessional from 1997 until 2000 with the special ed department at Midland High School primarily. And then lastly, to the family of Ruth Horner. She passed away October 24th, 2023. Ruth was employed with MPS as a second and third grade elementary teacher at Sugnet, Carpenter, and Siebert Elementary Schools. She retired in 1993 with 23 years of service. Thank you. Item 8 are correspondence to and from the Board of Education. Item 8.1 for information letters to the Board of Education from the following individuals or entities listed in the packet. Item 8.2 are for information, is for information, letters from the Board of Education to the following individuals and or entities listed in the board packet. Item number nine are scheduled activities for information. 9.1, all meetings are regular and are regular and special meetings of the Board of Education and begin at 7 p.m. at the MPS Administration Center unless otherwise noted. Those dates are listed in the packet. At this time, item number 10 is closed session for consideration of attorney-client privileged communication pursuant to Section 8H of the Michigan Open Meetings Act, MCL 
268H regarding a legal opinion. So I'll need a motion to go into closed session. I have a comment. Can you hold it one second? Yep. So all the dates that you went through yes, are in you? our search committee are going to populate this whole entire page? Yes, and I think we will list them on the board. Sarah, I'm speaking for you, so correct me if I'm wrong, but we'll take the list that we read through earlier today with HYA and list those on our board website as well, correct? Okay. So it'll be in both spots? Or yes. Okay. I, I support it. Do we have to, I mean, you read the agenda item. Do we have to be specific about, I mean, are we? Well, regarding the legal opinion okay. to go into closed session, and then we need two-thirds vote Got to go into closed okay. session. So motion by Hatfield, support by Lauterbach. Yep. I think it has yes. to be all right, on the motion to go to closed session, uh, Vice President Rausch? Yes. Secretary Hatfield? Yes. Uh, Treasurer Lauterbach? Yes. Member Blasey? Yes. Member Ringgold? Yes. Member Horwitz? Yes. With, with two thirds vote, we will move into closed session. So we move back into open session. Um, so we're on section 11 of the agenda stu study session discussion. Um, I do have one item, which is 11.1, .1, the Board of Education Officer Nominating Committee. Um, based on the tally of votes from board members, the 2024 Officer Nominating Committee will consist of myself, Jennifer Ringgold and the sitting president of the board, Scott McFarland. This committee will bring the proposed slate of officers for 2024 to the January organizational meeting for board action. Are there any points of clarification? Seeing none. Ms. Miller Nelson, the floor is yours. Oh. Yeah, we'll just end maybe on a positive note as Thanksgiving is often a time for reflection and expressions of gratitude. Uh, it's important to share how grateful I am for our Midland Public Schools team. We have such a great team of adults who are really working to care for kids. I think sometimes we think a school is just a building and really it's this amazing little hub of energy and learning and care and collaboration and it's because of every single member of our team who are working just incredibly hard and really intentionally to ensure that students are well cared for and well educated and actually that they're caring for one another as adults in the system. I'm seeing that more than ever and so just a big expression of gratitude for our team and I'll say the same to, to you all as board members. Um, you know, it's, it's not lost on me that you do this out of care and service for our school district, so thank you for that. Our jobs are not, your jobs are not always easy, uh, but we appreciate that you keep showing up uh, and serving our school community. So I hope Thanksgiving, long weekend, some of you are traveling, uh, others are hosting. I hope it's just a really wonderful weekend of rest and rejuvenation and that you do all the things that bring you joy. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you. All right. I will take a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Lauterbach, support by Horowitz. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Aye.